Welcome everybody, this is Supreme Decisions and today's episode for the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute podcast is our first episode that is going to be videoed for Anchor or Spotify, however you want to look at it. But it's going to be our first video episode podcast. Now today, this is also going to be another first. Today is going to be the first Red Pill Diary Episode 1. Today, I'm going to give you a little bit of support. You know, I think that's I think that's the best way to call it. I'm going to call it support because it's going to be the first time in the Red Pill Diaries that I actually go into why I tell you to videotape all your police encounters why I go into the context of when you're doing discovery, request body cam footage. Why I go into the context of getting the warrant application. Why I tell you to go and make sure that the police officer's affidavit, their police report, the scene report, are all in line with due process because the second episode is gonna deal with due process. I'm actually gonna talk about due process more as this podcast grows. But I'm going to give you the solidification of this. Also, the merits of getting a holder for your um, cell phones so it's not in your hands. I also want to offer you the same thing as, let's say, going out and getting a dashboard camera because you need to get the footage for the police because you know their body cameras never work their car cameras never work and also these things that are called police procedures are very seldom followed now the great part about this is the simple fact that we have an opportunity to get something because we know with the support of the red pill diaries that we have one thing that is very concrete and that's the truth everything that I'm going to talk about is factual everything that I am getting ready to talk about is documented pretty much seems like the exact same thing I've been doing for the past couple years. Well, today I'm going to give you reasons to have those dashboard cameras that I talked about that I actually advertised for Amazon. I actually put up, I believe, four videos with several links to these things because it doesn't matter your economic situation until a police officer actually knows that. It's a reason there's a war on the poor because those that are poor and disenfranchised have less of an ability to fight back. Those that are uneducated and miseducated are easier targets for those that are looking to build revenue through their actions. Now, 13 Philadelphia police officers were taken off the street because there were discrepancies between police reports, police procedures, audio and video reviewed of arrests that they had made. These officers had filled out false police reports of different crimes. I'm gonna say that one more time. 13 Philadelphia officers were taken off the street because they had falsified police reports. There were discrepancies between their reports, the police procedures, and also the audio and video aspects that were, were reviewed during their arrests. Generally, this happens when they have someone that's not disenfranchised, that's not miseducated, that's not poor. These are the people that often spark these reviews. Now, one of us, well, at least we should know by now, perjury is the simple form of giving information that we know is inaccurate. 
well, we're going with G.I. Joe again, knowing it's half the battle. We know that the police do not give accurate police reports. Why? Because they're using stock language, which does not allow for accuracy within their police reports. Doesn't allow for specificity, which is why oftentimes when you have multiple police officers on one scene, all of their reports read the exact same way because they are taught to do it one way. They're not taught to be articulate, be able to actually articulate the things that have gone on or they are going on that happened during those times. Perjury, because the reports are signed under oath and sworn to be true by the officer. But again, we're told to trust these people. We're told that these are the good guys, but these 13 Philadelphia police officers intentionally lied to create something. Because I know many of you remember that I spoke about Trevor Noah and his thing where he did a complete year long report talking about the police officers that are going out and dealing with quotas. I'm gonna say that one more time. Trevor Noah went out and did a year long report that dealt with the quotas of police officers and why they are filing these misreports. So whenever they're creating crimes, remember I did the podcast about a year ago, two years ago, that criminalizing life. I was criticized a lot about that one podcast. Yet, I'm reading something that goes into the whole point of why I'm telling you everything else when I laid the foundation of the criminality of not only those that are part of the system, but the system itself. But note, I never say that the system is broken because the system is working exactly how it was planned to be. The difference is that those that are fighting back are now becoming larger targets because they are upsetting the matrix. They're upsetting the workflow. They're upsetting the revenue flow of those that are looking to oppress and repress. It is also used for the filing of charges by the prosecutor. I'm gonna say that their reports were also used, their perjured reports were also used, the lies they told were also used by the prosecutor to create charges. Cause you remember the prosecutor is assistant to the police officer. Police officer doesn't know law. Remember the Tommy Sotomayor statement? Son, Tommy Sotomayor question podcast? The police, they don't know law. They actually lied in reports. Their reports were used by the prosecutor who does not care about evidence. Prosecutor did not care about the lies that were being told to them, that were being expressed to them, that were being given to them. Didn't care about that. And the reason the officer can testify against you as an expert through their amicus brief, which is their police reports. Keep that one more time. They're using their lie to prosecute you. They're using their lie to come in as an expert. Why? They're coming in as an expert against that charge that they swore to God was the truth, yet they're not allowed to speak the truth due to stock language. I'm gonna say that one more time. Their perjured statements were used to prosecute you. Their perjured statements was used to convict you. Their perjured statement was used to create them as an expert. Yet, most of us don't challenge this. 95% of people don't even challenge it. Yet people, oh, police officers say what they wanna say because you're not fighting back. A lie travels faster than the truth. Always understand that. When you're not fighting back against the lie, you cannot complain about the truth. I'm gonna say that if you're not fighting back against the lie, you cannot complain about the truth. And that's what happens in most of these cases. They're providing false versions of an incident as a crime. They're testifying falsely in court of a crime. to the person who does not care if a crime was even committed. 